Bien le bonjour ou bien le bonsoir, c'est selon. Bienvenue dans cette nouvelle rencontre avec des gens qui font des choses, qui euh, inspirent aussi pas mal la communauté des entrepreneurs, que ce soit au niveau journalistique, au niveau communication, au niveau publicité. Euh, vous avez l'habitude maintenant dans l'Open Newsroom d'avoir ce, ce genre de vidéo. Euh, on a la chance d'avoir avec nous aujourd'hui Sébastien Esser, qui est euh, CEO de Steady HQ en, en Allemagne, à Berlin. Il nous fait le plaisir d'être là avec nous aujourd'hui pour parler de, euh, bah, de son entreprise. Et on va la faire en anglais, puisque c'est une entreprise qui est basée en Allemagne, mais qui a vocation à pouvoir être européenne, et notamment en France. Bienvenue chez moi. Bonjour Damien. Je ne vais pas partager avec mes amis français. C'est assez uh, misérable, uh, okay. unfortunately. Um, my Dutch is also very, very pretty. So uh, let's let's do that in in English first. Uh, thanks for being here with us today. Uh, we've been uh, in contact through Adriano Ferrano, uh, which is also a journalist entrepreneur based in Paris. Now, in the past, he was in in San Francisco, and, and I've worked with Adriano at Oni uh, back in the days in 2012, I think. Um, and Adriano uh, posts, I guess it, it was a month ago or two months ago, uh, a job opportunity saying that uh, Steady HQ was looking for someone or uh, some people to help uh, the startups grow in Europe and particularly in French. And I was really interesting because your site, your website, and we see it at the screen right now, is already uh, translated in French. And it says that the future of the media belongs to independent and, and uh, professional creators, content creators. So definitely, it was really interesting to have a, have a chat with you. So maybe, uh, and we're going to talk uh, just a food, uh, about Steady, but maybe a couple of words about you. Who are you? What's your backtrack? And are you from, with, and, and who's this uh, idea is coming from? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, first of all, thanks for, for having me and for the introduction. And I'm very uh, interested in having this conversation <clears throat> because, as you said, uh, we were interested in, in uh, for the French speaking European public sphere. Um, yeah, to introduce myself, originally I'm a journalist um, and I've kind of Uh, gradually turned into an entrepreneur so I don't write that much anymore I started writing for newsletters uh, magazines here in Germany everything was still printed in you know early 2010s and these uh, publications were being were kept being shut down right so uh, they their business model wasn't working anymore and I kind of had the feeling that we weren't doing that our journalism was fine, but it just didn't work out anymore. That was one thing. So the business model was broken um, and it still is, as, as you all know. Um, and the other thing was that I had the feeling that the relationship between readers or users, listeners, and the journalists themselves were not really up to date anymore in those places that I worked. You know, it wasn't about a communication online like most people are used to nowadays. Um, but it was more like a one directional sender receiver relationship. And that I felt is just not something that has any future. So I, I kind of quit my job at this. Um, my last job was Vanity Fair, Germany, kind of a big trying to, to, to bring a big uh, American brand to Germany. A year later, it closed down, so I, I did the right, the right thing. And then I, I started working uh, as an entrepreneur myself. So I started by um, founding a crowdfunding uh, platform for journalism. Um, and that worked quite well. Mm -hmm. So um, actually, that's not true. I started with something else, which was a, a platform for syndicating um, journalistic content. And that was sold to Deutsche Post uh, quite early on. So then I kind of had some time to spend on this crowdfunding project. And then I ran a big crowdfunding myself for a magazine that was in 2014, a magazine called Kraut Reporter. So Kraut as in, you know, Schukrut. And the Americans call the Germans Krauts from the, 
from the war. So it's it's a bit a bit of a joke, uh, on a, uh, but one that you have to explain. So anyway, let's let's get that. <laughs> but it's called Carter Potter, and we were able to run a, a big crowdfunding um, for basically a million euros in four weeks, and that uh, we pulled that off just by stating that. You know, it can't go on like this. We need different media and you as users, as readers need to become members and also pay some money to make it happen. And that just resonated with enough people around 17,000. So it was kind of a huge, uh, you know, publicity stunt in a way, but also a new business model uh, and one that we call membership. And just by running all of these pro, uh, projects, I suddenly became from a, a journalist who writes and analyzes stuff into a kind of a manager or entrepreneur who tries to build stuff on top of journalism. And uh, anyway, just to, to finish my journey here, um, at Carlton Potter, we needed the technology to start this membership offering. Um, because you need to invoice these people. Then if you have, uh, you know, if you're a German magazine, but you have members in Belgium, mm -hmm. uh, you need to pay the Belgian VAT. How do I do that, right? And we just realized that the tools were missing and that all of these colleagues who wanted to start something similar um, didn't find the tools. And that's how we, we found out that we needed to start steady mm -hmm. uh, because whereas Cartoporter is a, is a cooperative, so it's not for profit. It's, I mean, it's not an NGO, but it's it's made for the journalism to exist. We needed some investment money to build something like Steady, and then just um, you know give it to all of these publications that maybe are looking for something similar. And, and Steady now has around a thousand uh, publications on it, most of them in Germany, but increasingly also in in other European countries. For example, in the French speaking world, um, one of our biggest publishers is Louis Media mm -hmm. in Paris, uh, a podcasting network, and we're actively uh, looking to grow our, you know, our, 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 first of all, we want people in, in Belgium and France to know about Steady so that there is an option like Steady that they might want to look into. Mm -hmm. Um, at f first time I, I saw some uh, some of the publishing uh, you you are help publisher you are helping. Um, at first glance, for sure, it makes uh, just look like a Patreon or slash uh, TP in French or whatever. What what is the difference between Patreon and, and, and Steady? Because it's the same ID somewhere. It's helping publisher publishing some some great content to an audience, and the audience will pay a recurring fee to have access to the content. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the business model is the same, mm -hmm. um, and um, there's a whole new category on the on the rise, and there's you know hundreds of companies by now mm -hmm. who are building something on this principle of recurring payments. Patreon is different. And first of all, it's huge, you know, it's gigantic. I think it's valuations 1.2 billion or something. So it's, it's one of these um, unicorns, American Silicon Valley unicorns. And uh, obviously we're not, but more um, from, a, from a product perspective, um, we're journalists. So uh, we are, whereas Patreon comes from the social uh, media world, uh, mainly uh, YouTube, Mm -hmm. And as journalists, we try to build something that you can integrate with your own website or with your own newsletter or with, with your own podcast. So we are made for people who control their own platforms. Okay. Steady's not doesn't work as well for, I don't know, if you publish on YouTube or um, on Instagram or something, although we do have some publishers who, who use us for that. But if you already have your own website, then you can use Steady, plug it in to your website. We give you a paywall, like a, an overlay where people can pay and become members like they weren't even leaving your, your website. So we try to make it not the Steady show, but it's still your show, they're your members. We integrate to wherever you already are and what you control. And we don't try to bring people to our platform and kind of make it all about our own brand. 
but to be more of a service provider for publishers with their own channels. Okay, that, it's, uh, it's an overlay who's coming, for example, uh, just in front of, I don't know, uh, if you have a, a, a WordPress or stuff like that, uh, you, you, you have a plugin and, and, and uh, the, the steady plugin is coming up front or in the, in the uh, up overlay of a WordPress site, website or whatever it is, a SoundCloud or podcasting, how, how does it work? Yeah, so there's two big um, kinds of publishers on Steady. One of them is the one you mentioned. So these are, you know, blogs, uh, single authors, but also small teams with like five to 10 people who run their own platform, for example, on WordPress, but uh, really it works on any CMS. Uh, we do have a WordPress plugin, but we also work on you know, what, whatever, it's just a JavaScript that you put in the header of your website, just like Google Analytics or something, and then it works in any okay. CMS. So that's one group, mm -hmm. people with their own website using Steady as a plugin. Um, and the other group is podcasters, and they use Steady basically as a landing page uh, that will allow uh, their listeners to, 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 to uh, you know, start a recurring payment and become members. And then people come to Steady and you have your own URL, you have a landing page, it looks beautiful. And then um, you can set it up in like 10 minutes. So that's okay. for people, mainly podcasters who don't have their own websites or don't want it or you know, don't actually need it. Okay. So uh, you can either use Steady as a landing page or integrate the whole Steady system on your website. All right, I, I'm just looking at the... Yeah, maybe the, I should mention... Yeah. I don't know, okay. <laughs> I'm just looking at the Louis Club um, page uh, you mentioned in French. Uh, there's two different uh, ways to uh, participate and, and choose the uh, to be a contributor or a member. Uh, uh, what what's the the, um, the exact wording you're using? Because uh, that's the art of the community. It's uh, how the content creator. Is addressing content to to the members. We we've seen a lot of different kind of platforms rising up uh, in this uh, content creative creative gig economy. I don't know exactly the, 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 the right words to to say that. But if you look at OnlyFans, for example, which is an extreme example of uh, producing small piece of content directly for the right people. It's one-to-one -one communication um, some, somewhere and it's the most valuable maybe. Uh, yeah, also uh, people don't wear clothes. So that's <laughs> oh, usually on OnlyFans, <laughs> right? It's mainly for, for, uh, for porn and... Yeah. Uh, but that's yeah, the but that OnlyFans is fascinating. Yeah. They are really good at this. Sorry, I did... No, no, no. That, 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 that's the extreme example of monetization of a piece of content if if we if we put apart the yeah. na the nature of the content but <laughs> that's the same if you if you're producing a video or a podcast or a piece of writing is the the, the same way you're trying to bring people in it inside your community so uh, how how do you uh, help the content producer to do that yeah I mean, first of all, you're exactly right. And that's something that a lot of legacy media don't get. They still think about paid content, right? So I'm publishing this piece of content, like an article, then I put a paywall in front of it, and then people want it so bad that they will start paying. Well, as we all know they don't really want it so bad because <laughs> there's there's other great stuff out there that is that is free. So um, and that's the subscription model, right? And we mm -hmm. don't talk about subscriptions, but about membership because the product is not really the content. You know, we're not in the same market as Spotify, Apple Music, Netflix. Mm -hmm. How could we be, right? If you run your, your own little magazine, maybe a regional or local newspaper on WordPress, how could you charge nine euros or 10 or whatever it is for Netflix that brings you, you know, gigantically expensive content mm -hmm. for the same price? How could you compete in that market? You just can't. So that's why um, we believe that the product is not the content. It needs to, kind of needs to be there because you want something exclusive when you start paying. 
but the product is the community or is the mission of that community. So if you're, um, let's stick with that example. So if you're if you're a local journalist in a in a uh, mid-sized town somewhere in Belgium, you've been fired by your newspaper because that's what happens nowadays. Uh, but you still know that you know a lot about this city, that people are looking for this kind of information. Why not? You know, ask them to pay just for you to stick around. Mm -hmm. uh, so the the common purpose, the mission of that community is really what people are paying for, and that's what we call membership. Kind of the mixture between exclusive content, but really the willingness to pay, being triggered by a common common mission of of a community, and that means you kind of need to communicate with people mm -hmm. because community is about communication it's about you know uh, making sure that everyone talks about the same values the same uh, needs the same interests and and that's why this term passion economy is kind of uh something that is a thing in the us at least uh where it's not about the gig economy anymore where you, you know where you pay some some poor guy on a bike to deliver your pizza, mm -hmm. but it's about, so it's not about this gig. I'll give you a small amount of money. So you bring me something. It's not about this little service, but it's about the passion that I share. And that's why I start paying because we, we share the same passion. And that means you can go into tiny little niches. As long as you find like a couple of hundred people who, are, who share the same interest, you can make a living. And that's that's pretty cool, right? How much, um, on average, how mm -hmm. much people do you need on board to hope make a living of uh, um, uh, of that kind of job as an entrepreneur, as yourself, as a content producer? Uh, I guess it depends the volume of of the money the people accept to pay you to 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 do that. But on average, when you see uh, the thousand publication you have already on Steady, how much people, for how much money does it fit to have a kind of I don't know maybe two thousand euros a month, which is on average what you need to make a uh, a living of your uh, of your uh, content producing <laughs> company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, that depends a lot on the costs and then what you need and stuff. But we kind of I've, I have this rule of thumb. So you can do a first calculation in the back of your heads. It's mm -hmm. it's three times five. Right. So okay. it's on average, people will pay five euro. Um, and when I say people, it's around five percent of your community. Right. Ninety five percent will not pay. And, and community means engaged community, people that you can reach on a regular basis. If 5% of this community pay five euros when you ask them five times. So you really need to tell this story and make it very explicit what the common purpose is. But if you do that and put it to them five times, then 5% will pay five euros. So okay. that's kind of the potential. If you know, for example, I have 10,000 you know, a mixture of my Instagram followers, Twitter followers, newsletter subscribers, podcast listeners. I think, you know, everyone kind of has this feeling in their stomach how, how big that number is. If you have 10,000, 5% of those would be 500 people. If they pay five euros, that's uh, every month. Uh, that's five times 500. That's 2,500 yep. euros. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. uh, I hope I'm not embarrassing myself here, but <laughs> that's, you know, if you have a community of 10,000 people, um, then you can make a living off, off of them if, if, if you really uh, try. You could also, if your community is smaller, but you have some very special knowledge or if, you know, these people are business oriented, so they have a budget, you could charge 10 instead of 5 euros. And then obviously you only need 5,000 uh, um, people and and so on. So so it's 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 quite easy to kind of make a business uh, business plan in the back of your head just by sticking with these uh, three times five mm -hmm. calculations. And of course, it's not always true, but it's more often true than not. Of course, 
the, the, the um, service uh, study is providing to the, 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 the publishing and the publisher is helping them to foster that community spirit and help them to, to monetize it. Uh, that's that's the, the main core business of the uh, of study. But there's always, as an um, entrepreneur, the question of taxes, uh, invoicing, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, We know that Substack is working on that on the US side. I think they're not, they're, it's not available in Europe or uh, in other parts of the world. Uh, um, but in the US, uh, they're they're working on that. Well, I'm, I'm afraid they are. They are okay. <laughs> the, 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 uh, I mean, their competition, obviously. Yeah. So I I know I know about. It. <laughs> yeah, I get. I guess they're looking to that, but it's always tricky because uh, even in in uh, in Europe, regulation are different. Uh, in France or Belgium, taxes, invoices, etc., cetera, et cetera, are different. How do you manage that? Yeah, I mean, but that's one of our main services, or that's why people are, you know, if they are happy that we are there, then that's what it's, what is important to them. So the way it works at Steady is that we've contract uh, constructed this legal um, uh, situation where me your members are Steady's members for a tiny second, so that we can take care of all the invoicing. And then by the end of the month, we just send you one PDF with, you know, a rundown of everything, mm -hmm. the different VAT rates in different countries and all that, and just send you the money to your bank account so that by the end of the year, you have 12 pieces of paper that you can, you know, give to your bookkeeper or tax accountant or even just, you know, uh, talk, uh, give, give to the tax authorities. But imagine you had even just 500 to 250 members and you would need to invoice them every month and take care of all of the VAT. That's just not something that is feasible and that mm -hmm. makes any sense. And, and, and that's what we try to uh, make scalable through technology. So we take care of, care of all of that and then it's our responsibility and we just give you all of the information and the numbers and the rundown and and that's all of the bookkeeping that you're going to have to deal with so it's it's kind of part of our service and by the way I should mention that it doesn't cost anything up front you just take 10% of any revenue that you make through memberships so there's no no payment involved at all Mm -hmm. um, it only means the more successful you are, the more money we also make because we always get this 10 percent cut. Mm -hmm. So for you, there's no risk involved, but we're very much in line with your interests in kind of having as many members as possible, because only then will we also make money. And that's quite important because people feel like we're on the same journey and we, we are just partners helping them along that journey and trying to make them more and more professional along the way. Um, Asma is asking a question. Do you have any insights on who the platform Steady helped uh, Louis Media grow? Did it bring a lot of new people, listeners that are willing to pay to their exclusive content? Do you have some numbers, facts and figure, or is it a secret <laughs> numbers? <laughs> So uh, any publisher can choose to publish their uh, numbers. So, you know, just like on Kickstarter, where you can say, well, you know, we already have a thousand uh, supporters, we need 1500. And that is a good idea. So we encourage that. Mm -hmm. uh, Louis Media hasn't has uh, chosen not to do that. So I can't talk about it. Okay. But um, let me say that they're happy. <laughs> Okay, that's a that's a pretty good answer. Um, don't hesitate, um, folks in the in the comment section to to ask some question to uh, to Sebastian. Um, the the um, you you said earlier that you need some funding to build study. Um, you said also that the most profitable or the publisher the most profitable will be study. Uh, you are growing. Uh, you are uh, hiring people uh, in 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 France or in uh, the way in Europe. What what's the next step for for Steady? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, basically to grow in the rest of Europe. So because in in Germany we've come to a place where people know us because they um, they just so many publishers use Steady as a as a service that 
it kind of grows by itself. So we kind of need to pick up our phones. Mm -hmm. But of course, if I, uh, you know, if I call somebody in Belgium, they will never have heard of us. Um, and uh, since in your own country, in our case, Germany is much easier because, you know, you may have met some time down in, in your career or something, or you know somebody that knows somebody. So the way to make this work in Germany just doesn't work in other European countries. So that's why I'm really happy that you invited me here for this interview, because it, for, for us, it's a way just to get to know the uh, people that might be interested. And we believe that staying in Europe and focusing on Europe is mm -hmm. something that can set us apart from other people that may have more funding, you know, from the US, you mentioned Substack, I think they have a funding of 15 million euros or something So if they choose to, they can just hire 20 people in Europe and try to make it here. Mm -hmm. But our advantage maybe is that we're in the same time zone, we're in the same cultural zone, we have the same, you know, as you mentioned, legal and tax regulations and know how complex it is and how to navigate that. Also, most of our customers tell us that they're kind of sick of running everything on an American Plus Silicon that. Valley company that at some stage will, you know, go uh, for an IPO and then become crazy rich, but then you're going to be screwed because you're not part of mm -hmm. that uh, that uh, thing anymore. And we just want to build something that works for European independent publishers. You know, I'm not saying we won't <laughs> go to other continents in the future, but that's really not something that we're planning in the coming years. We'll really try to make this work for Italy, for Spain, for Poland, for France, for Belgium, uh, for the Netherlands. We do have a lot of traction in the UK. So the uh, quite well-known publishers in the UK already use us. Um, a bit sad, you know, them leaving, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a bit unfortunate, but uh, we, we just hope that Steady gets more um, word of mouth in, 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 uh, in other parts of Europe and that um, it, it helps us grow this ecosystem of, of independent digital media all over Europe. So it's definitely a target for you uh, to attract some already established publisher, but not too big, but not too vertical and and too um, too big yeah. uh, and i i see a lot of of uh, uh, potential uh, user uh, here in belgium uh, we can say that medor uh, there, there's different kind of publication already with an, uh, an existing fan base who could be monetized through a kind of platform you, you you're providing but it's definitely a new way of thinking about uh, being a, a, an independent publisher and, and relying on um, the fan base and the, 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 the membership of the, of the people. So it's going to be a, a, a long journey, but a very passionate one, because definitely yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a gap between the uh, standalone guy in his bedroom and um, being, uh, yeah, being a company with a, with a community and, and being able to, to monetize it. Um, mm -hmm. do, you, do you have some good advices you, you see or do you have some great story to tell about uh, one of the publisher or publishers you have already helped uh, through a study to grow and, and some great insight or great, yeah, great story happening uh, because of study? Um, well, I mean, there's some spectacular stories where, for example, we started um, working with a uh, uh, magazine called um, Geldem in the UK, which is for uh, um, which was in real big trouble uh, through the whole uh, Corona crisis and every sort of income breaking away overnight. And so that's why they kind of came around and switching on a steady project. And now the whole company basically runs on, on memberships. But really what's maybe more important is that um, it's very, uh, all of these stories are very similar and maybe they're not as spectacular, but um, the way it usually works is they learn about steady. They may think about using something like steady and trying out membership but then they wait for two years. 
<laughs> and then our job is to just keep calling them uh, and telling them, you know, every euro that you're not making this month is lost forever. And then at some stage, they're finally understanding that the old business model with, you know, ads and stuff just doesn't work out anymore. And they're willing to, to give it a try. And then it's usually a great, uh, not only financially a, a, a good uh, amount of extra money that is very reliable, right? So mm -hmm. all of our publishers are basically growing every month and it's more of a question of how much they're growing, but everyone is really uh, growing. Nobody is kind of going from uh, 2000 euros to zero in one month. That just doesn't happen. It's very stable. I mean, that's why we're called steady. Uh, so it's, it's, it's something that you can rely on, right? Um, um, sorry, I lost, I lost, uh, no, 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 the, 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 the point is that you, you, you've been, um, you've been able to provide also the community of steady, uh, tips and tricks and help and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and so yeah, on. Yeah, I, I'm just showing the, the, the way you are using the, um, um, calculation of the, 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 the incoming for the, for the content creator. Uh, yeah, actually that's very important for us to grow because usually mm -hmm. publications don't come because we call them, but because they see some other publications use steady that they maybe respect. And then they, you know, see that this works and this might also work for them. And, you know, all I'm saying is just do it now. <laughs> Don't wait for <laughs> two years because you're going to do it anyway some, someday. And why, why not now? And also, it doesn't need to be a huge project. You can just start small, you know, and, um, you know, start a steady page or um, set it up on your website. It, I promise it doesn't take longer than half an hour. And then maybe sh show it to some friends or even to some users And then when you have the first 10, 15 members, uh, send out an email. So it's not like a crowdfunding where you kind of stress out for, for weeks and months and are really uh, exhausted afterwards. But you mm -hmm. can slowly start and then just grow it, grow it organically every month a little bit. And that's just extra income. So it's, it doesn't really hurt any other business models. It's an extra income. And as a, that's what I want to say, I think it's not only about the money, but connecting to these members who tell you with their bank account that they value your work really does an amazing, amazing things for your self-esteem, for, you know, um, your, you understand better you, who you work for, what you do, why, why you, you know, do this work. Um, uh, when people actually show you that they value it, Uh, by sending you some money, even though they maybe don't have to, that does a lot of good things for your, for you personally, uh, apart from the money. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is there okay for a company to participate or is there another way to do that? Is it only for um, people uh, or a company could also participate and, and be a member or what? Um, is there a special plan for a company to do that? No, no. I mean, we will. We welcome companies. Also, we work work with uh, some uh, legacy media companies, like, uh, for example, Die Zeit, which is maybe uh, uh, one of the brands that you have heard of in Belgium of the German mm -hmm. uh, newspapers. It's a weekly, and they had like a, for for a young audience, they had this website, and um, and they tried it and worked worked great. I mean, if you combine a, a, a mission. And reach that's that's pretty awesome. So the um, design is um, paying or some recurring fees to content producer on steady to help them grow. No, no, no. Oh, They okay. had um, uh, the design had a publication um, kind of a sub brand okay. called that for younger people for like millennials, uh, which was a, a separate brand but of the same company. And they didn't want to use like their usual paywall technology, but they wanted something that represented this community, uh, you know, passion element better. 
and instead of building it themselves and not really knowing whether that's an investment that pays off, they could just try out a uh, steady and pay the 10%, but not having to invest anything and being able to start immediately. Also, it works great for like newsletters, podcasts that are kind of side boats to your, to your main newspaper. But honestly, this is not our main market. We're really focused on the independent media mm -hmm. who doesn't have the infrastructure, who can't afford to, you know, hire um, developers. And honestly, they don't need that because we, we figured it out what you need. You can just use it. And then all we ask is to participate in your success. Um, and that seems like a fair deal to, to most of them. Great. Um, thank you, Sebastian, for all those uh, info and insight about Steady HQ. So, guys, um, and I'm talking to my students in journalism and communication. Don't hesitate to have a look and try some stuff. I guess I, I, I will launch my own just to, to look and to see how it works. And um, if it's just, just uh, an HTML tag, I could do that on my notion.so stuff and see if it works. <laughs> and see, and see oh, if... wow, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm not sure about Notion. Um, I, I'm, I'm using super.so uh, uh, upfront uh, Notion, and I, I, I've got the ability to inject some uh, JavaScript and HTML. Oh, so, it well, should yeah. work. That's actually an interesting case, having a Notion with a paywall. That's cool. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, uh, I'll, try, I'll try, I'll try. And then for the open newsroom too. So th thank you again, Sebastian. Uh, and uh, obviously I'll, I'll give you all the links. And um, if you have, um, yeah, again, some, some great stories or whatever happening to, uh, uh, to stay the HQ from Belgium, don't hesitate to ping me again and we'll have a talk about that. Uh, and definitely I will ping some, some publisher here in Belgium who are really active and, and could really benefit of uh, steady and I, I see a lot of them um, almost two to you know, three or four maybe could be could be really interested great well thank you very much damia for having me and um you know all of your listeners or viewers if you don't really uh, are not sure uh, whether this is for you just give us a call uh you know let's talk about it you don't have to decide and know everything we're, we're we have a team that you know, consults you and helps you understand, you know, what you need, what your potentials are, uh, answers any questions. So we'd be very interested in kind of getting to know, to know you. And again, thanks for letting me do this shameless promotion here, <laughs> but I hope it helps uh, some of your viewers. Yeah, sure. Definitely. I'll, I'll, I'll give them uh, the link, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a, a good way to figure that out. How much people do I need to make a living of my content producing uh, activity? This is uh, really useful stuff and never see that uh, elsewhere. So it's pretty interesting. Thank you again, Sebastian. And thank you. All the best bye for bye. the rest. Bye bye.